What is up, MMA fanatics? Welcome back. As always, I'm Coach Greg, and today we're doing the system breakdown of Shavkat Rachmanov. Uh, he's a Kazakhstan-born fighter who is a master of sport in Sambo, master of sport in MMA, and he is an excellent choice for a system breakdown. I was very excited you guys voted for him. By the way, don't forget to cast your vote for future system breakdowns by using the link below. Um, I'm very excited about it breaking him down because not only is he impressive because he's 17 and 0 as a professional, but because he has a 100% finish rate. It's a very interesting statistic. And more important than that, he does a lot of really interesting things in his fights that are worth noting. Not only does he have great fight IQ, great striking, uh, great cage work that is far above what I see from most other people, but there's a couple things that he does that are kind of unique to him that are worth discussing because it's things that kind of break from the herd in some very interesting ways. But overall, uh, his system of fighting, what I think is most notable about it and why he's so successful is because he's very good at putting the fight on his terms. That's something we've talked about a lot, both in the Demi and Fit Fight System, hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, it's available on Amazon. Uh, but also we've talked about this a lot in system breakdowns and the importance of determining where that fight takes place and always being in control of putting the fight on your terms and never fighting their fight. And that is a thing that he does very, very well. And that's what we're gonna to discuss today. So that being said, stay tuned. And let's start getting into the system breakdown of Shavkat Rachmanov. Okay, so let's start by talking about his range management and kind of an overall tactic that he uses for keeping himself safe. He does some really interesting things in terms of movement. Not only does he move them back behind the black line consistently, but he simultaneously maintains a static kickboxing range and his primary defense, especially early on in the fight, is to evade back out of range. This seems like a contradictory kind of movement where I'm moving them forward, I'm staying in place, and I'm moving back. Here's how he does this. On his entry, what you're gonna see a lot out of him is what I call duck walking. You kind of lead with this head as you enter into range, and the reason for that is so that he can continuously walk them back and faint a little bit and kind of probe to see where they're at. Also, this head movement is really great because an object in motion stays in motion, right? It's much easier than kind of going cold and going flat. If I'm already in motion, even backwards, I can kind of spring into it. If I'm going forward, I can spring into it. And this is gonna help him on some of his tactics we'll talk about shortly. So this duck walk allows him to continuously walk them back. What the natural tendency of most fighters is, is to move back to kickboxing range to adjust. Not a lot of guys like to stay in the pocket. Like there are a few guys like Jose Aldo, Sean Strickland. Most fighters don't like to. And if he does get somebody, you know, he'll put the jab on him and that'll kind of make them want to move back. Also, he has some tactics for guys who want to stay in too close anyway. We'll talk about that shortly, like knees and clinches and stuff. That's fine for him. He wants to be close on them anyway. So as he starts walking in, guys will naturally move back behind the black line and he'll just follow them with the duck walk to keep them there so that he maintains a static range. Then if they happen to attack, and especially early on in the fight, most of his defense is just get out of the way. Get out of the way, walk back in. And what happens is he just naturally kind of keeps putting guys behind that black line. Why? He wants to be able to get them up against the cage. That's one of his primary goals is put people against the cage. Now the duck walk provides him some interesting opportunities as well. From here, early on, it's evade. Get a sense of how they move. One of the things I really like about him is he does a lot to get a sense of how they move before he commits to action. And he does this a lot, particularly in his counters. He walks forward, he evades. If they happen to throw some sort of a blitz at him, he'll start adding some head movement at the end of his blitz. So as he comes in here, he starts coming here, he'll slip and pull and add this kind of stuff in, right? Making it more elusive and giving him the chance to make anything that does connect more of a glancing shot. Then he duck walks back in. Right. Comes in here. This fainting action is also great because they're not sure when he's gonna pull the trigger and where he's not. Then, once he has a sense of it, he can pick his moments. And what he's looking for is what I call in-between moments. And one such example of that is to hit a guy just as he's getting ready to hit you. He comes in here, they go to throw, he evades back. Duck walks in, they throw, he evades back. And then just at the moment where they're about to throw, he beats into the punch with the long jab. It's a very nice tactic to catch somebody. 
And what I like is he doesn't just walk into range and try to catch one on it every time. He takes his time, gets a feel for when the timing is right. No, I'm not ready yet. Now's the time, right? This is a skill that is worth practicing. We did this last night in drills, and I think it's got a ton of benefit to it. The idea of standing here just as they're about to punch to catch them. Now, the flip side of that is if he feels like he can't get them, sometimes all he has to do is pull. A lot of his counters, you'll notice, especially early on in the fight, tend to be pull and counter. Why? Because he's already doing this motion. I can beat him to the punch, or I can pull and counter. It's a very easy motion to do. Evade back, evade back, pull and count. And what's nice about this is it gets guys used to the idea that they can throw and he'll just evade. They'll throw and he'll evade. They don't feel like there's as much of a threat. So when they throw, he goes, oh, this time I gotcha. Or they go to come in, this time I gotcha. It's a very different way of breaking things up. And it's nice because he gets to pick his moment. Now, some things that he'll do as he starts to get a feel for a guy, then he'll start adding in things like more of a slip game. Slipping is hard, man. Like, there are some guys, Jose Aldo, once again, the reason he's so successful in the pocket is he's so good at slipping off of things. It is a hard skill to develop, and there's a lot of risk in it. Because if I'm off even a little bit, I get clocked hard. So what I like about him is he doesn't feel like he has to stay close to constantly be doing it. He moves back and he evades. He moves back and he evades. Then he looks for a thing. Maybe it's the right hand, okay? As the right hand comes at him, he tests the waters the first time to kind of see, maybe he'll try to come up, maybe he gets nothing, doesn't matter. Then he moves back, then he throw the jab, and he moves back. And he just looks for that one attack. This time, pop! He's able to time it because he's waiting for it, right? In the same way that when I throw a reactive shot, I wait for the boxing, right? I'll throw boxing, throw boxing, when they come back and they step into it, I can shoot. Same kind of concept. I move back, I only bite on the one that I want. Then when I get the one that I want, that's when I can attack off of it. So it's slipping, but it's a setup slip, right? It's not feeling like I have to do it every time. That can be overwhelming. He picks and chooses his moments, and that is a very important skill in fighting. Now, from there, there's a couple things that he does that I think are really important towards his game. Level changing and exit strategies. Very important aspect. So, a couple things that he'll do. Let's talk about exit strategies first. Some different tactics. We talked about one of his goals is always to put people against the cage. So whenever he comes in here, right, let's say we get into an exchange. Now he can come up on top. He can either block the hand here. He can start to put a hook here. He can counter attack. Whatever, the right hand comes up and he's gonna slip the underhook. And now he's got his under over body clinch. He loves this position, especially against the cage. So what he's gonna do, he comes in here, maybe he throws a combination, they start to throw something back, and now I'm right on top of him. It's an easy way to tie up. Every, I love clenching as a tie up. We talked about it with Daniel Derouche, you know, how he throws. Same concept. Derouche does the tie clinch and moves it back. In this case, with, with uh, Shavkat, he jabs, or he throws an attack, maybe they throw something at him, and he goes to counter, they end up in exchange, Essentially, any time he's close in the pocket, he can hit the clinch. Other things he does, if the hands are up, any time their hands are up above the ribs or the shoulders, he's gonna throw a midsection. You're gonna see this a lot in his game. One of the ways he does it is as an exit strategy. He comes in here, they start to exchange, hands come up to guard his face, puts a knee behind it, then he might transition to that under rope. That happens a lot. He does the same thing if he happens to be backing guys up. Uh, if he lands a clean shot on guys and they start to back up, what I like is that he doesn't rush a blitz. He just stays on them and follows them. And then when their hands come up and he starts backing into the cage, he knows what most people are gonna do is start throwing high. He gets his hands up on the inside, contain, controls his inside space with clogging the lanes, and then knee strike comes on the inside. Then he starts coming back to his punches. Then he can enter into his clinch. He knows the common response as guys start getting against the cage and they're in trouble, they're gonna swing back. They're either gonna run away, in which case he just follows them, puts hands on them, or if they back up to the cage, 
They start to throw, interfering hands, knee strike. He can either throw punches or he can clutch. Very nice stretch. That knee strike is a huge part of his game. You're gonna see him use it a lot. Same thing with whenever he gets to the clinch, yeah, you're over. When he's moving guys around, you'll see him hit this knee a lot. Why? The hands are up, right? Anytime he feels like their hands start coming too high, the knee strike is there for him. So those are kind of his primary things he likes to do as exit strategies. Like I said, the rest of the time he moves in and he can just disengage. Sometimes the other thing I want to mention is if he's throwing the jab, the jab's his big weapon, of course. If he throws the jab and he ends up on the outside, you see this a lot in the Jeff Neal fight because Jeff Neal's a southpaw. And so he fights from an open stance a lot. And as he throws the jab, if he ends up on the outside, which you see him do a lot, take the outside position and start to throw this up. And what he does is he kind of comes in here and he'll shrug to hit the hook. He's done it in other fights too, even against Orthodox fighters. Because as you get in here, guys kind of tend to square off. So as he comes in here, if he feels like he's on the outside of them and he's not maintaining the inside position where he wants to throw that knee, if he's on the outside, look for him to just shrug and throw the hook. What's great about this is, you know, maybe you can post on the shoulder, maybe you can just use your connection on the head, whatever you have for connection. All I have to do is rotate my hips, but look how it loads me up for that counter hook. Very, very effective strategy. Um, now, that being said, let's talk about level changes. Where I talked about the knee, knee's a big part of his game. Got a couple other things he does that I like. Um, one thing that he does, that he does this almost every fight that he's in, is the turning back to set up the turning wheel kick, the spinning hook kick. A lot of times, he likes to get guys, if they start moving in this direction, this is his cue. This is a good tactic anyway, because the turning back kick works best from orthodox, where I have access to the liver here, right? The lead side roundhouse kick isn't as great from here. Even a switch kick, it's too telegraphed. But as they start moving this way, the turning back kick becomes very available. So as he's moving, he just kind of has to move naturally. And as he starts to see them go this way, maybe he follows them the first time, right? Remember we talked about picking his moment. Then he has a sense for what they're gonna do. And as they start to cut this side, turn back in. Then he disengages, goes back to his game, right? And beat with a punch, maybe puts five, 10, 15 seconds between it. Then he starts to cut across, and instead of going to the turning back kick, now he level changes, and he hits the spinning hook kick. Very nice strategy, right? Come in here, come in here, spin. Really, really a nice way of catching people, and he lands it clean a lot. Very devastating. Spinning hook kick's a very powerful kick, and when he gets it, man, people drop one thing he does. I also like the fact that a lot of times when he does kick to the body, he will use some front kicks to keep him at range sometimes and also to frustrate him, right? So as he's in here throwing the jab, sometimes just kind of messing up their flow. I also like that sometimes he'll throw a real like roundhouse kick to the body and he puts a hook behind it. I like the idea, and I've talked about this a lot on the show, when you kick to the body, you should be following it with a punch, especially a same side punch, right? Right? And this is something he does, once again, level changing. In his early fights, you see a lot more light kicks mixed in as well. He doesn't do it as much since he's been in the UFC at least. Uh, other things that he does. One technique that I like, that I saw, I, can't remember, I think it was Neil Magny, I can't remember. It wasn't the, the Jeff Neal where he just came out with the high rounds. Maybe it was later on in the fight, I can't remember. But the idea of getting into a boxing exchange and he's so relaxed that sometimes this probing feels like, or the jab feels like he's just probing. And sometimes now I'm starting to see this out more. He'll probe with the jab and they think it's just kind of lazy. And he puts up a roundhouse kick, but he doesn't throw it very hard. Like it's just kind of like, like he comes in here and it almost looks like he's just kind of moving around a little bit. Like, oh, I don't have to worry about this jab. And then he throws the roundhouse kick, but he doesn't throw it super hard, right? It's not pow. It's just enough to put the foot up there. The weight of the foot and their movement is enough to catch them a lot of times. And it's kind of a cool concept to be in here and go, one, right, pop, pop. Then, kind of probe in the water and just pop. He doesn't have to throw it very hard, but it does land. You know, a roundhouse kick, he probably throws it a little bit harder than that, just like, maybe like that or so. It's devastating, right? Constantly putting levels on them 
putting kicks on their head. Man, even if you get kicked light to the head, it still hurts. And I like the idea of that tempo and pace change where not everything has to be pop, right? Sometimes that's enough. Sorry, I'm not very stretched out right now. Um, so that's a thing that I really like that he does. This kind of level changing, working the body hooks, right? Getting the knees in there, right? Kick to the, kick to the body, punch to the head. These kind of tactics work really well to disrupt his opponent by constantly attacking body and head, body and head in a lot of interesting, unique ways. Okay, let's talk about some things he does against the cage that I find really interesting. One of the things I find fascinating is that he does everything on the wrong side. And what I mean by that is this. Normally when you get somebody against the cage, you see guys, right side underhook, head position, hip position, all this stuff, right? Trying to split the legs and they want to be on this side and start fighting for you. He does the opposite. He both, both offensively and defensively. Why? Because he likes this left hand under clinch to the body lock, right? So a lot of times you'll see him in here putting guys against the cage, using this body clinch position, that under over body clinch, and attacking this way on it. Defensively, that means that he goes this way. Normally, you see guys, once again, fighting from this position here, right? Right hand under hook, left hand over hook. But he switches things up. He does this on the ground as well. We'll talk about that when we get there. So he goes to the under over here. From here, uh, what I find interesting is that, you know, offensively, he's decent, right? He'll start getting in here. Sorry, I wish I had my partners with me. They have jobs and stuff too. Uh, as I come in here, you know, he can start throwing knees here. He'll start doing stuff like he can start dropping down to get to a leg and start to try to turn them off and stuff like that. Maybe doing this kind of stuff here. But a lot of times it gets reversed. And normally that's a really bad thing, right? Come in here and they do this to him. In this case, I think this is where he actually wants to be. He doesn't have a problem with taking, you know, putting guys up against the cage, because this is only letting him look like he's winning, right? He is winning. Being here on a guy is great. He can start breaking down, throwing knees, throwing strikes, tilting them, getting his shots in here, starting to think about trips and stuff like that. That's all great. But most guys don't like to be backed up to the cage. For him, he is very comfortable here. This is a place he likes to be. If they start doing things like dropping down, he'll pummel for underarms and stuff like that. But a lot of times he'll do stuff like, he'll just kind of keep wide and he waits to see where they're gonna go. And you'll see him kind of peeking over where their feet are. And then he'll start hitting Kusodagari. He'll start hitting Aochiga or Aochiga. You'll start seeing him starting to do things like, once again, tilting for the Uchimata. What's interesting is that normally from a wizard, you're gonna have a left-hand wizard, right? And you start thinking about Uchimata this way, but he's backwards and it throws guys off as he's in here. So if they start to break down and change levels on him, now he starts going for his strong right-hand wizard, pulling in this side and coming on top. Because of the body clinch, the under over body clinch allows him to keep their hips in too making trips and things like that easier. Or if they start dropping down like they're gonna pull him over, he'll fall on top of him, right? It's all he has to do is just maintain and float. He doesn't have to do a lot of hard work from there. As they try to roll him back, and you know, sometimes guys will do stuff like they'll try to pull you off the cage and stuff like that and bring you down. He just falls off, very easy. Because he has a connection that makes it possible. So if they do try to do something, he can do that. Also, from here, what you'll see him do a lot is from this position with the under over, if they start dropping their head on this side, guillotines. He has a nasty guillotine. Really, really nice stuff. And you'll see him take it from here, start working from this position, and then start using this to start throwing the arm in guillotine. He's willing to fall down into it. This concept of switching everything on its head I find very interesting so that, you know, instead of coming to here and starting to break them down and tilt them this way, now they're dealing with it in this set and it's different, right? It's just awkward. It's the same thing like, you know, in jujitsu, 
If I go to knee cut pass, everybody does it to this side, right? Everybody's used to defending on this side, attacking this side. It's an unwritten rule, it just feels more comfortable. But sometimes you'll get guys who are left-handed or maybe they're just smart and they've been practicing this side from the get-go and it feels different. You have to think things out a little bit more and it slows down your responses. It doesn't feel as natural when I start going on this side. And that's what he does against the wall. It's a different type of clinch he likes to use, the under over. It's a different type of stance or side switching. And he doesn't care if he gets reversed because now he's probably better attacking from his back against the cage than he is driving into it. And this is not what guys expect. Most of the time when guys back me up, they feel like they're in control. But in this case, no. Now, I can pull in their hips and start to break them down very easily. You know, and you'll start to see him do stuff where, like here, start to get, turn these knees out, right? This kind of stuff where you can start to turn the knees. This is a really important strategy to be able to do this kind of stuff. Um, and he does this offensively as well, where he'll start to turn these knees away so that now he can take the back, right? That is it. Uh, at some point, I'm gonna make a full cage breakdown of what to do against the cage. But the idea of turning a guy's knee in here is very important. You do this from a lot of different ways. You know, I can start to drop down. You start coming underneath, raising this up. Or in this case, coming behind it. So instead of splitting the legs and putting all my energy to pinning him here, I let him start to bring his knee in and now I come across. And this is the type of stuff that Shavkat's very good at. He is very, very well versed in this position, which is why he puts his fights there. He strikes from the outside, right? Throws his knees, starts to chase it back, throws the knees, gets to this position, controls them, goes for takedowns, starts to get the knee, get to the back, Obviously we know he has that rear naked choke from the halfback. Or if they reverse him, okay, he starts coming in here. He's got the Uchimata on the wrong side. Once again, instead of doing a wiggle this way, he's going this way, right? He's got his trips, all this stuff, bringing him down to the guillotine. Very, very nice systematic approach so he keeps the fight where he wants it. The point I'm saying is that he strikes the way he wants to strike from the range he wants to strike from. He gets the clinch he wants to get to control in the way he wants to, in a way that feels weird to them. Allows things to be dominated from what seems like an inferior position, but it's not. Almost like a, a bottom side control baseball bat choke. Like, you thought you were winning, but I gotcha. That's a lot of the stuff he likes to do in his ground game and clinching. Okay, so... There isn't a ton of stuff on his bottom game. You almost have to go all the way back to his uh, WMMAA career back as an amateur. And you see him do stuff like, uh, one of the fights I saw, like he got to a lockdown, use that to push the knee back, get to a closed guard, uh, doing things like from a side control, coming up to a, a single leg, getting to his base, getting to a single leg, and using that to disengage and pull himself out. So he's got a bottom game, right? He, he knows what he's doing on the bottom for sure but we just don't have a lot of footage of it and, and none in the UFC. Why? Because he dictates how the fight goes. He dictates the takedown. He's the one getting the clinches. Very tough to take this guy down. Um, guys who have tried to usually end up with him kind of like getting on top of them, kind of falling on top of them because he kind of floats across, knows where he needs to post, knows where he needs to put his hips. Very tough to take down. So um, in the UFC, he's been purely on top. A couple things that he does that are interesting. One is that from a closed guard, if he happens to end up here, he mostly just gets a seatbelt and keeps them from doing anything to move their hips and keep close for a minute. He might throw a little body, body stuff, but mostly he just kind of hangs out here for a minute because what he's looking to do is posture up. He wants to start to get up to here. He waits till their feet open and then he starts to posture. And what's interesting is he's just looking. So early on, they might be kicking up. So he leans his head back so he doesn't get kicked in the face. But what he looks to do is put these feet on his hips and stack. From here, he starts throwing bombs. Because from this position, he can throw very heavy. And with their feet on his hips, they cannot do a whole lot, right? They need to be able to do something to clear this position first. Maybe it's a butterfly hook or whatever. But if he's here, it's gonna be tough for them to do because he's also putting his weight forward. So it's hard for them to kick up with any real substance, right? And if he does feel those feet leaving, 
he can also hit forward again. You'll see him do this a lot on entry as well. So with Neil Magny, I think it was that he knocked him down and he starts rushing forward. And you see him immediately coming in here as the feet are coming up. He just kind of starts to clear him, get over it. And then it's here. Then what he'll start to do is start thinking about passing to his side. A couple of things will happen. Sometimes if a foot comes on the inside and he doesn't feel like he can get over it, he'll just kind of fall to his half guard here and sit on a hip. Because now he's halfway to clearing, then he start getting his foot out, right? But what he seems to prefer to do more is knee on belly. And this is something I think is really cool because you don't see a lot of knee on belly in MMA. But he does it because there's a lot of striking opportunity. It's a very underutilized position. So he comes in here, he makes sure he doesn't get kicked in the head, gets forward so that these feet are on his hips so he can throw bombs, clears, starts to go knee on belly, right? He can do it either knee, right? Now you'll notice, once again, passing to the wrong side. Most people when they pass are thinking about going this way. He's not, he goes to his right. So he starts dragging this across to get his knee in here, start throwing bombs. If they happen to recover a half guard, great. He's okay from here. He can stay postured up and throw. Then he starts working his foot on the inside so that he can sneak this foot over the back to take it back. He'll do the same thing in reverse against the cage, right? He'll be in here. And he'll start off in the half guard, sneaks a foot inside, so that now he can start to clear this foot over top and get to a back. That's how he gets chokes. He doesn't need to get a full back position. He's comfortable getting a choke from a half back position as we just learned from the Jeff Neal fight. That's basically it. It's not complex. Knock a guy down or take him down. Stack and throw bombs. If he gets the foot in, I fall to my half guard. So he starts clearing, getting in here, getting on the opposite side, and start getting to this back side here to attack here. Or stack and throw bombs, clear knee on belly, make them do something to get to a position, right? Maybe they happen to get their foot. Very simple game, but very effective. Very easy to consistently go back to this position. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Make sure you share with your friends.